Hike or pilgrimage? If you're thinking of undertaking your first Camino, you might be treating it as a hike or a pilgrimage. What's the difference? And does it really matter? That's what we're going to be talking about this week. Okay, so let me just preface um, the video this week with the fact that, as always, these are just very personal views based on my own experiences of the Camino. Uh, but I like to share some of the things that get me thinking about the Camino, uh, and particularly things that might help you if you're planning your first Camino. One of the questions that comes up a lot online is, pilgrimages versus hikes. And uh, a lot of people talk about the different ways that you should undertake a Camino and uh, you know the purpose behind people's Camino and so on. So I am not here to say that there is a particular way that you should walk the Camino or that it has to have a particular purpose. Um, I just wanna share some thoughts that make the Camino a very special thing for me and totally unlike a hike. And you know, you might be a hiker thinking of walking a Camino. Uh, you might not be. Um, I'm not sure what's attracting you to the Camino. Maybe comment down below. But I can tell you, I am not a hiker. And, and people say to me, oh, you must hike a lot when you're at home. No, not at all. Uh, for me, the Camino has got nothing to do with a hike. So let me explain that. And um, you know, it might generate some questions or discussion down below. It might get you thinking about planning your own Camino, but why do I say that? What are, what are some of the things that make it so unlike a hike? So I actually posted something online a little while back, so I've kind of printed that out because I'll, I'll use that as a little bit of a, a prompter so that I can share my thoughts with you. Um, if you look up you know, the sort of definition, definitions of a pilgrimage and things, that the, there's a few things which stand out which I think help us understand why a pilgrimage is different to a hike. And one of those is that it has a very strong purpose or goal, um, and very often with a spiritual or, or religious uh, connection or, or really centered around that. And if you think about the Caminos, that's exactly what they have been traditionally. Uh, they, they were ancient... Um, Oh, my memory's going, I'm losing terminology here, but they, um, they were very ancient pilgrimages, even before they were Christian pilgrimages, um, you know, for thousands of years, as, as the path, particularly of the Camino Francis, follows the, the Milky Way. Uh, and then, of course, uh, it became a very um, popular Christian pilgrimage when, the, when Jerusalem was hard for the Christians to get to because of the, uh, uh, the Crusades going on. So... But, but I think for me, something that makes the Camino very special is that purpose or goal. And, and, and for the Camino, one of those is that we're walking to uh, the tomb of St. James in Santiago to Compostela. So it, you know, it has a very sort of definite aim point and a purpose to it. Um, and I think that's a very powerful component for me. I'm not sure, I've, I've only walked three Caminos, but they've all ended in Santiago. I'm not sure I would enjoy a Camino so much, you know, if I was going in the other direction or, or if I was just walking part of it. I, I know a lot of people walk sections. So, uh, you know, they might walk for two, year, two weeks, one year, two weeks the next year, gradually heading towards Santiago, but they are heading to Santiago. So it has that, that sort of ultimate goal and that, you know, religious or spiritual center. I, th I think that's an important element. You know, that makes it very different from a hike. Um, the, the next thing I had on, on my post was that it has a precise destination with a religious or spiritual significance. Absolutely. Um, absolutely, the Camino does, because, you know, we're heading to Santiago. There's a purpose there to, you know, maybe to attend the Pilgrim Mass, visit the tomb of uh, St. James, and so on. Um, and actually, if you've had a look at my blog, you know, I call it In Search of Santiago, uh, or the, the title of it. And, and it was for that reason, it, it was, I was searching for something and I felt the thing I was looking for was probably in Santiago. Um, in fact, it was all along the route. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> I'll, make, I'll mention that as we come near the end. 
The other thing I think that a, that a pilgrimage has about it, a characteristic, is that it takes a long time. Um, my second Camino was one where my wife Pat joined me and we walked for seven or eight days. That wasn't enough for me at all. I'm really just kind of getting into the groove after that time. And funnily enough, as the day before we arrived in Santiago, Pat said to me, I'm really getting into this now. I think I want to do a longer one. <laughs> I kind of went, oh, gulp. Uh, we're going to do one from uh, from Saint-Jean, obviously, next time. So I, I think it's that. It, it takes time and effort uh, for it to be a pilgrimage. You know, it takes time for things to settle down, for you to clear your head, for you to find whatever it is you're looking for on the journey. Um, the next one is interesting because I noted down here there needs to be a degree of suffering. I was kind of hesitant about that, but actually I was talking to somebody last night about it who had coincidentally um, cycled a Camino. We were actually having a business meeting online and I mentioned the Camino and he said he'd cycled the Norte and he regretted cycling it because he missed or he, he recognised that sort of community of suffering that he was seeing amongst the walkers and not the cyclists. And, and he sensed that very strong sense of community amongst the walkers in that they were kind of suffering together and helping each other. I know this is going to sound a bit weird if you've never walked a Camino. If you've walked a Camino, you'll absolutely get it um, because you're, you're part of this sort of moving community and you're, you're helping and supporting each other on that journey to Santiago. And he felt he didn't get that cycling, um, which is one of the reasons I don't think I could ever cycle a Camino because it, it would all sort of be happening too quickly and I wouldn't be engaged with the, that moving community as much and so on. So yeah, I, I think there does need to be a, a degree of suffering I mean, it, and, and it's not just physical. Um, I, I find there's quite a, an emotional <laughs> component to that suffering as well. Um, you know, as you're kind of playing head games with yourself while you're, while, while you're walking. Uh, the other element I think that is really important for it to be a pilgrimage in my mind is that element of sacrifice. Um, and it's not necessarily just a sacrifice of time or a sacrifice of money. You know, it doesn't matter in what mode that you're doing your Camino, the type of accommodation you're you're using and so on. Um, it's got nothing to do with any of that. I think it's a deeper sacrifice. Um, and it's very often the things that we leave behind, leave at home. So on my first Camino, you know, I left people uh, having to run my business. I, I, I left my wife behind who was looking after a sick father. Um, you know, you might say they were the ones making the sacrifice, but I, I carried that guilt with me as well on that walk that I felt that I, I'd abandoned people and you know it wasn't it was very selfish for me to be doing this. So um, you know I, I think we can we can sacrifice a bit in terms of the things that we leave behind, the commitments and responsibilities and things like that. So um, and and we feel that you know we mustn't waste that journey because maybe we and others have paid dearly, not just in monetary terms, but um, you know, we've maybe given up a lot to, to be there. So I think there's that, that sacrifice element. Uh, the next one is probably the speed of travel. And this, this brings me back to the cycling versus the walking. And look, I'm not having a go at anybody who wants to cycle a Camino. Um, you know, I have no right to do that. I'm just sharing my own thoughts. Uh, but I find for a Camino to really work for me, I have to travel slowly. Um, and even though I'm walking, I walk slowly. <laughs> because I have to, I'm not particularly fit and I'm generally carrying injuries, but I like to travel slowly um, because for me, it's almost like a walking meditation. And if, if I'm trying to speed along, it doesn't work. You know, I'm focusing on the wrong thing. Uh, I, I actually like to slow down and, and feel part of the environment and let it soak in and spend time, you know, sitting on a mountaintop and just contemplating and spending time with other pilgrims. So I, I, I think I, I, th I think it's important for me, certainly, on a pilgrimage like that, to move slowly through the countryside. Um, and I'm not sure if it's on my list of things. If it's not, I'll mention it here. 
Um, and, that, and it's kind of linked to that, but I think that first Camino made me realize the, the true meaning behind that saying, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. And I realized that probably two or three weeks into my first Camino, that it absolutely, I was going to say, had nothing to do with, with reaching Santiago. And, and yet I've just said that, you know, that's the goal and the purpose, and, and of course it is. But the learning, the value, if you like, the benefit of the Camino was not in arriving at the destination. It truly was the journey and, and the experiences and, and the learning uh, and so on that, that takes place through that journey. And I, and I think that's probably why I feel that I need to walk longer Caminos as well, because that that's very hard to compress into a week or so. There's, there's a kind of transformation that has to take place, which is hard to do, I think, in a short time period. Um, you know, on, on that first Camino, I felt like I'd, I'd gone through all of that transformation probably in the first three weeks or so, and, and then I kind of hit a wall and I was down in the dumps like, I've got to do this for another three weeks. Uh, but that in itself was was a learning process that, that I went through in a couple of days. So I think, again, you know, it's that traveling slowly and, and over a fair distance that, that really is part of it. Um, I think the other thing that, that kind of differentiates you know, a pilgrimage from a hike for me is is kind of being open to every aspect of what happens along the way. And, and this is a very integral part of Camino for me, and particularly when I'm walking alone. Um, you know, I've said this on a few videos, I, I don't really class myself as religious, but, but spiritual. Um, and I, I, I like to kind of just settle down and, and be very aware of what's going on around me, relaxed, but, but very aware and, and very open to things that, that might be happening. Um, and, and I think, again, that's where the sort of magic happens. You, you know, I often use the term, you have to walk with an open heart and an open mind um, and really be open to, to things that are gonna happen to you and around you. Um, and I think that's a really important aspect of the Camino and for pilgrimage to me as well, and all part of that that sort of journey being the learning, you know, not not the ending. Um, and I think also the the other really important element for me and, and the attraction with the Camino is probably the historical aspect. And it's the historical and the sort of religious background because, you know, to walk along an ancient pilgrimage route that millions, literally millions of pilgrims have walked over thousands of years, um, is a very special experience. And again, if you haven't walked to Camino, you're, you're gonna think this guy's you know, in la la land, he's a nutter. Uh, but if you have walked to Camino, you probably know what I mean. I mean, I, I, I reflect on sections uh, coming out of uh, Burgos up onto uh, the Meseta heading for Hornias, where you're walking on sections of old Roman road. And I was totally alone that day you know, walking on my own, and you can almost feel the energy of pilgrims and Roman soldiers over thousands of years, you know, who'd walked along that road, and, and you a very deep sense of history and so on of, of the area, which you don't get on a local hike. <laughs> I guess that's what I'm saying, you know. Uh, really, what I started out, the purpose of this video was to, was to try and differentiate that pilgrimage, the Camino, from a hike. You know, a hike for me, it's a pleasant walk on a Sunday, you know, through the local park and, and the forests and so on, but it has none of the elements or the attraction of a pilgrimage. And that's why, I think, you know, I mean, just to sort of think back over some of these points that I was making, you know, it, it's, it's generally quite a long distance, you know, it's got this element of suffering, it's got this spiritual or, or religious um, centre around it. You know, there's the history, there's the community of all of the other people moving with you. Um, you know, you might say if you're in the US and you're a through hiker or something like that, you know, you might say, but I get that walking the Appalachian Trail. I haven't walked any of those trails, but I don't know. I think it's probably a little bit different. Love to hear your thoughts down below. I'm just trying to share with you what is so special about those Camino routes and what stands them so apart, I was gonna say above, that's not the right term, but so apart from just a long distance hike. 
Um, and it really is a very, very different experience, which I have probably articulated very badly. But let me know your thoughts down below. Um, if you're planning your very first Camino, you know, are, are you just looking forward to having a nice hike through Spain? Uh, and staying in some cool places and visiting some old buildings? Um, is, is it very much a spiritual or religious journey for you? Why, why, why are you hiking the Camino and not the Appalachian Trail or something else? You know, it's, it's an interesting question, I think, that, that we're constantly asking ourselves. But for me, the Caminos are a very special place. Um, and in fact, somebody mentioned something online which I thought was really good. It was, uh, somebody had commented about, you know, oh, they should provide better facilities or something along the Caminos. And, and, and this person who I won't name, who is very well known in Camino circles and actually lives on the Camino, said something like, the Camino is my church. Please respect it and don't treat it like a theme park. Um, and she meant it in, in the nicest possible way. And I know exactly what she meant. It's not just a hike. <laughs> not, not for me and not for a lot of people, but I, I've waffled on long enough. Uh, love to hear your thoughts and comments down below and uh, appreciate you listening to this old bugger waffling on about nonsense. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.